welcome. Good to see all of you this morning. Um, we're getting a little few more every week, so we'll be getting there. Um, glad you came, though, because we have some special things, some beautiful music coming to us this morning, and the celebration of Connor Perry's going off to college for the first time tomorrow, and, um, and a pretty fair sermon, if I do say so myself. So I think it'll be a good, it'll be a good uh, time for us to be together. Um, we certainly want to keep continue to keep those in our prayers who are fighting in the middle of the pandemic, those health care workers who are keeping people safe, and uh, prayers for the health of our congregation, which is so far so good. And um, those are the things that I have on my mind as announcements and things to bring before you today. Are there other announcements that need to come this morning? Chris? speaking to you from the uh, Pumpkin Patch Committee, who met this week, August 5th, to decide what we're going to be doing for advertising. And all of you should have received in the e-blast this notice, but I am speaking again to you today uh, about it, and also for the people who are watching uh, on, uh, online as well. Just as a reminder that this is a very, very important kind of thing, not only for the Pumpkin Patch Committee, but for the whole church in terms of having a successful event. As you know, advertising is very costly and we don't run on an extensive budget that can afford advertising. So we, have, we came up with uh, an idea of thinking about adopting a portion of the advertising fees. It's going to be sort of like adopting a highway, but on a much smaller scale. Um, it's going to work like this. I've contacted two newspapers uh, in the area, one in Western Mass and one right in, uh, in our own neighborhood, one being the Sturbridge Villager and the other one, the Palmer Journal. Uh, the Sturbridge Villager is able to give us a really good deal in terms of advertising for a total of seven weeks. Uh, six of those weeks we pay for, and the seventh one is a freebie, which will be an extended ad. And what it amounts to would be $35 for each week. And so we're asking if there are people who would like to uh, sponsor one of the weeks uh, in terms of advertising uh, in the Sturbridge Villager. We already have two volunteers that have come to me and said we'll put in $35, but we're opening it up to the, the whole community and the church family to see if uh, we can fulfill that particular task. The second is the Palmer Journal, or more specifically, Turley Publications. And Turley Publications represents 10 newspapers in Western Massachusetts, and they produce what's called the Autumn Fest. And the Autumn Fest is published on September 14th and covers, this flyer appears in all 10 Western Massachusetts newspapers. And what we're asking, not a specific amount uh, for, the, for the Palmer Journal or the Autumn Fest, but any donation you feel you would like to make. Um, as little as a dollar or more. I mean, any every donation counts. So if you could please, I have flyers out in the back as you leave. You can see one if you didn't get the e-blast. And I appreciate you giving it your attention. The important thing is the deadline for these. If you're interested in doing the Sturbridge Villager, we need the check by August 21st. If you're considering a donation for the Autumn Fest, the deadline is August 26th. Now, these deadlines were also in the uh, e-blast, and again, I hope you will give them your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. 
Harris, and thanks to the committee who's doing such a good job with that. Are there any other announcements to come before the congregation this morning? Well, we don't want to also welcome our online worshipers, which I didn't do at the beginning, but we're happy that you're with us as well and happy that that is possible. So we'll begin with uh, some music. here this morning walk or ride our bicycle or drive our car whether we are aware of it or not it is Jesus who calls us to this place and Jesus who calls us to be together and Jesus who calls us to turn on the computer or the television so we can be part of worship this is the wonderful thing about worship that Jesus calls us Jesus waits for us here and Jesus opens his arms when we arrive let us pray Good and wonderful God, sometimes we don't feel you right here. Sometimes we're not aware of where you are in our daily life. But Lord, we know you are there. We know you are here. Even when it isn't obvious, even when we struggle to see you and to keep our focus on you, we know that you are here with your arms around us, holding and embracing our souls and our spirits and our hearts, reminding us that we are your children, reminding us that we are not alone, reminding us that you are the first and last word of our lives, now and forevermore. Amen.
We are certainly missing having our children here in the sanctuary, but that will happen as soon as it can. And uh, so I'm just going to do a little children's message from here this morning. Um, kids, I want you to know that the, the, the scripture reading this morning, the story about Jesus this morning, is about Jesus walking on the water during a storm and taking care of Peter when Peter gets out of the boat and he gets scared. And I was thinking about what kind of message does that send to us? Not only that Jesus will always take care of us, but that one of our jobs as people who love Jesus is to care for one another. So when you have somebody in your family or a friend or even a stranger you may see who is sad or confused and they maybe just need a little help, you know, you can sit down and listen to them and give them some support. You can walk with them and ask them about their story and give them a chance to tell you what's going on. And when this virus is over and we're all safe, you can give them a hug. But in the meantime, you can give your friends and your family when they're struggling, you can give them your help and your support and your kindness and compassion. And sometimes it's as simple as a smile in a crowd. Sometimes it's as simple as just, you know, winking at mom and dad and letting them know you're connected. But we all need to remember that as much as Jesus helped others, it is our job also to help and support others. Those we know and those we don't know in all the storms of life. Will you pray with me? Wonderful giving God. Please pour out your spirit upon us that we may be kind and understanding and helpful to those in need. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus loves me.
us, huh? Thank you so much, Diane and Andrew. And uh, that was for you, Connor. Thank you. We might get them to do it again when we have the other two going off to college soon. Uh, but uh, yes, you go with our love and our blessings. Now we come to our time of prayer, and um, I have been asked now that we're on um, now that we're on uh, public communication, as it were. Um, we need to ask for prayer concerns without using last names. So, if you could be so kind, that would be great. Harry, what? Lebanon? And also for Jonathan, who's in the midst of moving into his first apartment. Anything else? Yeah, Chris? Um, tomorrow I'm going to be at Huntington Hospital for a test regarding a problem I have with my heart. And my prayers are for if you could give me some, some comfort in terms of having a positive result on the test. Thank you. You will certainly be in our prayers. What time is your procedure? Oh, I gotta get up early and pray. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> we will be praying for you, absolutely. Anything else? Yes, Nancy? I'm sorry that everything's dumped on you all at once, but but listen to the sermon this morning. It will help. No, they're whispering to each other. Listen to the sermon this morning. It will help. It's addressing exactly what you're going through. Anything else? Oh, yes, Lisa. It's going to be a challenge for them, but they're smart. Yes, Tim. Prayers for Mike. Mike. You can speak again. Sure he will, and we will certainly. We don't stop praying for you today or tomorrow, Connor. You're you're on my list now, okay? So on a lot of lists. So anything else? So thank you for our village. It keeps growing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here for such a long time and hanging in. That's that's a wonderful thing. Anything else? Will you join me then in the spirit of prayer? Dear God, come to us in those places where we are fearful and unsure, where we are apprehensive and frightened. Be with us in the woes of the world and our country. Help us all to heal and to grow strong and to feel your presence in the midst of illnesses, the pandemic, the racial unrest. God, pour out upon us the faith to know that you will see us through. 
pour upon us the thankfulness we need to see those places where you are coming to us and touching us and blessing us in spite of everything that's going on around us. And God, I ask that you would inspire us and move us to make a difference in the world. To be kind and compassionate to those who are different from ourselves. To put ourselves out to help other people who are also scared and unsure. God, we hear the, the gonging of your bell. And it reminds us that you are here with us. It reminds us that we are never alone, even though we may feel like we are sometimes. But you are always here with us, oh God. And we lift up to you those for whom we have asked for prayers today. We ask for your spirit upon Lebanon to bring peace, to bring wholeness. We lift up Jonathan to your care and your direction in a very new phase of his life. And we ask that you would bless his parents as well with your reassurance and your love. Lord, we ask that you would be with Chris tomorrow as he has a test for his heart at Harrington. We pray that he would feel you in the room with him and know that he is not alone. We pray that you will be with Nancy as she waits for the news of what happens. We pray that you will give her the reassurance that she needs as she waits. And God, you know that sometimes we are overwhelmed by the way life dumps on us. And certainly the Kastendikes are certainly Chris and Nancy are dealing with that, with the remodel of their kitchen and his test. But God, we know you will give them the strength and the focus and the the love that they need to get through tomorrow and find the next a better day. We pray for Connor as we already have, but we pray that he will find new friends easily, that he will be safe in the college environment. And we again pray for his family who will miss him so much. We ask that you would pour your spirit upon him so he knows he is never alone. Lord, we lift up to you, Mike. For whatever he needs, we ask that you would hold him in your arms of love and give him the strength that he may need. Lord, we thank you today for this church, for this community of faith, for the perseverance and and commitment we have to you. As we pray that time will come when more people can come back and we can be together. And God, we look forward to a time where we can actually give each other a hug. And we look forward to a time where we can sit quietly and talk for long periods of time if we need to. God, pour out your spirit upon all for whom we have prayed. And pour out your spirit upon us that we might remain faithful even in this difficult, difficult time. All this we pray, O oh God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5. 
Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and your heart. That is, the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that the scripture says, <coughs> anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses <coughs> all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The Gospel lesson is from Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. It's a continuation of where we were last week. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus said to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And that when they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. God always blesses the reading of his word, no matter where it is. Let us take it to our hearts and to our minds and to our understanding. Our holy God, open our hearts to your word for us this day. Help us to hear the message we each most need to hear. Make us stronger, more faithful, and filled with more love. This we pray in your name. Amen. I've never been able to find an academic proof of this, but my New Testament professor in seminary almost 35 years ago was convinced that the expression we sometimes use about keeping our heads above water surely must have originated with the account of Jesus walking on the water and keeping Peter afloat when he tried to, but became overwhelmed by the wind and the waves and began to drown. 
What is interesting is that if you look at this, if you look this phrase up online, you find that it is considered a way of expressing financial trouble. But I have always thought of it as an expression we use when we are just overwhelmed by anything, not just money troubles. Lately, I have felt it has become a struggle for most, if not all of us, to stay afloat, to keep our emotional heads above water. As the pandemic has ebbed and flowed and threatens to become worse before it gets better, add to that the racial and power struggles in our country, and we do feel overpowered. Frustration and despair and worry fill every day and every night. At first read, we might wonder why Jesus didn't just still the storm as he does elsewhere in the Gospels. But the point here seems to be that if we cannot stop the storm, if we cannot stop the storm, Jesus gives us the strength we need to safely ride out the storm with him. The crux of this story is of Jesus walking on the water is that he gets out of the, he gets to the boat and he's strolling along as if he was on solid ground. He doesn't seem to show any hesitation or nervousness about the whole thing because he trusts God so very deeply. In fact, when Peter asks him to, Jesus calls Peter to come out on the water with him. Peter steps out of the boat pretty steady and determined at first, and we're like, wow, that's pretty cool. And he begins walking toward Jesus. In our minds, we can even hear the other disciples screaming at Peter to be careful. Each large wave coming near must have brought shouts from the boat. And with all the distraction and fear around him, he takes his eyes off Jesus just for a moment. And his focus moves to the wind and the water. And he begins to sink. To be overcome by the elements of the storm, but mostly overcome probably by his very own fear. This is one of those situations where we undermine our own ability to cope with the challenges in our lives. We get through any adventure or challenge or journey in life by keeping our eyes and our hearts on Jesus. That's what being a Christian with Christian faith is about, keeping our eyes on Jesus. The moment you and I take our eyes off God and ignore the strength and insight of our faith, we lose our footing and we begin to drown in our own doubts. My friends, every generation has its own defining moments and times when it is hard to keep our heads above water. For my grandparents, that time was the Great Depression. For my parents, it was World War II. For my generation, it, it has been the Civil Rights Movement and the Vietnam War. And then it was AIDS, which was first being recognized when I did my chaplaincy training at Boston City Hospital in 1986 and I minister to the very first AIDS patients in Boston. For my now college kids, this will be the thing. It will be the coronavirus and the resurgence of racial hatred that will define the early global and country experiences of their lives. It seems that every generation or so, something happens that leaves us shaking in our boots, that grabs the joy of new and peaceful challenges away from us and drags us down to near annihilation. The story about Jesus and Peter is about trusting God. Simple as that. No mere human can walk on water. Jesus strolling through the waves show he shows he is God, clothed in human flesh. God can do what is impossible for humans to do. So long as Peter depended on God and relied on God's power, Peter was able to walk on the water as well, but when Peter stopped consciously depending on Jesus and tried to do it under his own power, he sank. Jesus once said that unless you become like the littlest child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Little babies are totally dependent on their parents, and we must be as dependent on God as little children are on those who care for them. We must be as dependent on God as little children are dependent upon their parents. The problem is this. Becoming truly dependent on God means giving up our control. It means understanding and accepting that we are not in charge and that that's okay because God has everything under control. I don't know about you, 
but I do not give up my control easily. God and I have been struggling over this ever since I was a kid. I do not surrender my illusion of control without a fight, even to this day. To even consider becoming as reliant on God as I was on my mom and dad when I was a kid is incomprehensible. It's a goal, but it's incomprehensible. Now, I had it good, certainly better than a lot of people. I had parents who I could trust and rely on no matter what. However, so many of us had parents who could not be relied upon. The idea that you could trust them to always put your best interest first was unimaginable. Whether it was alcohol or drugs or abuse or neglect, you always felt threatened. You trusted the people in your life when you were a kid to put you first, to care for you and protect you. But in many cases, they let you down over and over again. So what I need to tell you this morning is this, and that is that God is different. God is a different kind of parent. The God of the universe loves you completely. Even when life may let you down and even when other people disappoint you, God will never, ever, ever do so. It's as simple and as complicated as that. Now, we've all been let down and disappointed by others, family members, friends. Some of us have been let down by churches and pastors. But the final word of God is love. Always love. When we feel scared or uncertain or have to face something that frightens us to death, God is here reaching out to us, lifting us up to walk safely with him on the water through the winds and the waves of life. You and I, we get scared by things that look like they will overtake us. We turn from Jesus, the source of our power and peace, when that is the very time we should be turning toward Jesus and reaching for his hand. A pastor tells this story. When I was in seminary, I served a country church and had a fairly new car. One day I went out to start the car and nothing happened. I thought I had a dead battery and went through all the hassle of getting a new battery, only to discover that it wasn't the battery. It was my cables that had shaken loose traveling those back country roads. Once a tight connection was reestablished, the car worked perfectly. Once a tight connection was reestablished, the car worked perfectly. Once Peter looked up again and reconnected with Jesus, he was fine. And everything worked out perfectly. But you and I choose what we focus on at any given moment. When we choose to focus on the problem rather than the power, we sacrifice our connection to Jesus. Jesus is a power greater than any of the problems that distract us. When our problems threaten to pull our eyes away from Jesus, we turn from the greatest power there is to no power at all. If you and I spend our time and energy focused on the bad stuff, we lose sight of the one who is greater. And the bad stuff. We must never allow the difficulties of this life to distract us from the source of all power. We must not allow ourselves to be distracted, have our attention called away from the purpose Christ has for each of our lives. Whatever we are facing, the one greater than our fears or our problems or our doubts is here. Jesus is waiting for us to believe in him enough to risk whatever we must to leave the boat and walk on the water. Amen.
before we bless our offering, one just housekeeping moment. Um, when we leave this morning, the uh, ushers will come and dismiss us each from our pews so that we can go fairly separately. And what happened last week, which I thought was wonderful, is people went outside and we kind of gathered on the front lawn there in the park. Um, so I would recommend instead of trying getting too close to one another with social distancing and all inside that maybe we could all just gather out there and have a chance to visit with one another, if you would be so kind. We can obviously not pass the offering plate at this moment, so um, if you didn't see it coming in, you may see it in the, uh, when you leave at the very back of the center aisle. Uh, there is a, uh, an offering plate for you to place your offerings and gifts. Um, and we thank you for all your generosity. I was looking at the giving the other day and we're right, we're right where we should be, even with all the, the um, struggles we've been through. So let's keep it up. We're doing a good job. So uh, let's have a prayer for the dedication of our offerings and then Andrew will play the doxology. Holy God, we wish we had millions and millions to give you to sustain your church and its ministry. But we do give what we can. And we know that it is powerful because you pour out your own power upon it. You multiply what we give so that there is plenty, not only for us to maintain the church and the staff, but for us to reach out to those who are in greater need than we are. God, whatever we have placed in the offering plate or will place in the offering plate, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon it, that it may be granted and to be larger and more powerful than anything we could normally give. And God, pour out your spirit upon us that we may continue to be generous, not just with our money, but with our spirits, that we may be kind to those who we meet along the way, and that we may have compassion upon our friends and our family in the places where they need us so much. We thank you, O oh God, and ask that you would bless all of our gifts this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 